Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Teal. I'm only coming on for a few minutes. This is the first Sunday of the last month of 2023, and we are blessing and praising the Lord for what he is done and what he is getting ready to do in the month of December. Did you know that the number 12 in biblical numerics is the number of the kingdom? Did you know that? Did you know that the number 12 in biblical numerics is the number of the kingdom? The Bible says in Romans 14 and 17 <laughs> that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Romans 14 and 17 says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I pray that this month will bring to you the manifest power of God's righteousness, peace, and joy in your life. I pray that before you step into January, it'll be made right. I pray that before you step into January, you'll have a new peace that you've never had before. You'll see God bringing things together, reconciling things, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. I pray that before you see January, the joy of the Lord will explode in you and you'll be strengthened by that joy. I pray that you will have an understanding that God is at work in everything that's going on in your life. And because God is at work in everything that's going on in your life, you can still joy about it. It's not about what's happening. It's not about what's happening. Joy is not about what's happening. Joy is about what you are understanding. And do you understand that God is on your side? If you do, you'll get joy. Do you understand that all things work together for the good? If you do, you'll have joy. Do you understand that he's already overcome the world for you? If you do, you'll have joy. Are you hearing the man of God? So I want to greatly encourage you to come into the month of December with an expectation that the kingdom of God is going to be made manifest in your life in a fresh way. Keep on praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It is going to be made manifest, I believe, in this 12th month. And before you see January 1st, you'll be dancing around that coffee table, giving the Lord a praise because he has set some things in order. He has brought his kingdom to bear upon your life. And now you're seeing the manifestation of his word and his promises coming alive in your life. If you want that, if you receive that, say yes. Just right now, in the middle of all this, just say yes. If you're, if you're up for that, if you, if you want to get in on that promise, if you want to step in on that rhema word right now, just say yes and come into agreement with this man of God and you'll get an amen on the promises of God. I believe that. Now, let me share this with you briefly. So that wasn't the share. No, it really wasn't what I came on to share. But let me share something with you. If you have a Bible, real quickly, go to Matthew chapter two. If you don't have a Bible, I'm gonna read it for you anyway. But if you have a Bible, jump on with me to Matthew chapter two. Now, while you are looking for Matthew chapter two, which is not hard to find, I want to remind you that at 9 a.m., if you are in the pray area, 11 a.m., if you are in the pray area, we will be in person with Pastor Harry Ford in the Mount Calvary Church at 9 a.m. That information is posted on the page that you are watching right now. And then at 11 a.m., we'll be with the Morning Star Church of God in Christ. And that is, again, Oakland, California. And we will be supporting Pastor Benny Taylor. I will be sharing the word in that service and both services will be offering to you the Lord's Supper in an in-person worship. So if you're a member of the house, a partner of prayer everywhere, you want to be a part of what the Lord is doing today in the pray area. You can meet us at 9 a.m. or you can meet us at 11 a.m. And again, that information is already presented and posted on the page you're looking at right now. All right, go with me to Matthew chapter 2. Go with me to Matthew chapter the second. Let me read for you verses 10 and 11. Matthew chapter two, verse 10 and 11. And then I'm going to pray with you. Matthew chapter two, verse 10. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. 
They rejoice with exceeding great joy. This is your season to rejoice with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. You know what scene this is. This is the scene of the wise men coming to see the young child Jesus in the house. You know this scene. You know about how Herod is hunting for the Messiah. Herod wants to destroy the Christ child. You know this scene. You, you know this, all right? But watch this. If you are wise, you are on a journey of generosity. If you are wise, you are on a journey of generosity. I'm going to try it one more time. I know it's much. If you are wise, you are on a journey of generosity. Your whole life should be a journey of generosity. These wise men come from a long way. And the reason they take the journey is because they're going to show up with the ministry of generosity. They're taking the journey because they have decided that their life is going to be represented and recorded by their generosity. The reason they get into the scripture is not simply that they took the journey. The reason they get into the scripture is because when they took the journey, they took the journey with the purpose of showing up and manifesting the ministry of generosity. God has put so much in you that your whole life needs to be a journey of generosity. I mean, what God has poured into your persona and your personality, you need to be generous with it. What God has given to you in intellect and academia, you need to be generous with it. What God has given to you in the financial and the material, you need to be generous with it. What God has given to you in spiritual gifts and unctions, you need to be generous with it. What God has given to you in faith and in family, you need to be generous with it. What God has given to you in employment and assignment, you need to be generous with it. If you're wise, you won't hoard. If you're wise, you won't be stingy. If you're wise, you won't be greedy. If you're wise, you won't try to get all you can and then can all you get. If you are wise, you'll take the journey through life and the greatest journey through life is the journey of generosity. And if you don't believe that, cast your eyes upon Calvary. Cast your eyes upon Calvary. How does Jesus get to Calvary? Because he takes the long journey of generosity. Are you listening to this man of God? Are you hearing any words that are coming out of my mouth? My Lord, do something. You need to live your life taking the journey of generosity if you're wise. And so the wisdom of God teaches us to live generous. The wisdom of God teaches us to live generous. The wisdom of God teaches us to live generous. And all this month, I will be bringing to you a call for generosity. You've heard me say it more than once that God redeemed the world on generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What generosity. And that generosity became our salvation. You cannot be wise in the things of God and not be generous. Your whole life should be a journey of generosity. Now, let me tell you three things. Bishop, three points for real. Just three things. We're not even three points. Just three things. Quickly and I'm out. Three things that are going to happen for you. If you take serious the journey of your generosity, if you would right now determine coming into this month, I'm going to be radically and extravagantly generous in the kingdom of God and with the things of God. You make that determination. You can turn situations around in your life right now. Let me show you what happens. 
these wise men because they take the journey of generosity because they came to do the worship that requires generosity three things happen for them number one they get new vision they get new vision for those of you who can hear this word right now and you know faith is coming by hearing this word i'm decreeing declaring over you you are about to receive new vision this month, you will see God giving you new vision and you need the new vision now because you want to go into 2024 clear and decisive. You need vision now and the Lord wants to give you new vision. I'm not talking about your recycled vision. I'm not talking about the vision you borrowed from the church down the street. I'm not talking about the vision that you wrote and dusted off and trying to bring it back. No, I'm talking about new vision. God's showing you possibilities that you haven't seen before. If you're ready for that, say yes. If you believe in God for that, say yes. Do something right now with that word. If you live generously, if you make a determination today, I'm going to live outside of the bounds of my normal giving. I'm going to be more generous than I've ever been before because I'm believing God for new vision. I'm agreeing with you. You're about to receive new vision. The Bible said they saw the star. They saw something that they hadn't seen before. They had a new vision. But not only did they have a new vision, they went into the house. And when they come into the house, it's a new visitation. It's a new visitation. Some of you say, I don't need a new vision. The Lord's given me clear vision. I've written the vision. I'm running with the vision. But there are some of you say, I've got the vision, but you know what I need right now in my life? I need a new visitation. I need a fresh visitation. I need to be in the presence of the Lord in a way that I haven't been in the presence of the Lord. I want to recapture my devotion. I want to recapture my consecration. I want to spend more time in prayer. I want to spend more time in praise. I want to spend more time in word. I want to spend more time in worship. I need a fresh visitation. I need to be in the house with Jesus. I need a fresh visitation. For some of you, your fresh visitation is going to come today because you're going to get up, you're going to get out of your pajamas, and you're going to go to an in-person worship. You're going to go into a house. And when you come into that house today, I want you to expect a fresh visitation. I want you to believe for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in a new way. I want you to have a sensing that God is with you like he hasn't been with you before. They went into the house. That means that where there is generosity, you'll get a new vision. And where there is generosity, you'll get a new visitation. But finally, where there is generosity, if you're going to take the journey of generosity, not only are you going to have new vision, not only are you going to have a new visitation, but finally, you will be a new version. You're going to be a new version of yourself. The Bible said they opened their treasures and presented unto Jesus gifts. This is a version of themselves that they haven't even seen before. They're worshiping Jesus in a way that they've never worshiped before. They're giving to the Lord in a way they've never given before. They're sacrificing in a way that they've never sacrificed before. And they open their treasures. Hear me, child of God. If you would open up to the possibilities of generosity, you'll become a new version of yourself. If any man would be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. You can be a new version of yourself. But in order to be a new version of yourself, you're going to have to take this journey with us, the journey of generosity. I'm calling you to generosity. I'm binding everything that tries to work in you that is avarice. That is stingy, that is closed, that is greedy, that is myopic, that is miniature. Everything that God wants to do in and through your life is going to require that you open up your treasures. And if you open up your treasures... If you are open to the possibilities of generosity, if you're open to what God can bring out of you and God can bring through you, you'll be the one presenting the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh because you showed up with the ministry of generosity. So go to worship today <laughs> and show up with the ministry of generosity 
and watch God expand new vision in your life. Watch you have a new visitation in the spirit of God and watch you begin to be a new version of yourself if you would just open up. If you heard this word and you say yes to this word, and you want to see this word manifested in your life and in the life of those you love, will you let me know right now? Man of God, you're praying with me. I told you we would pray before we leave. I'm getting ready to pray. If I'm praying with you, let me know, yes, you're praying with me. I want to enter into that season of new vision. I want to enter into a season of new visitation. I want to enter into the season to be a new version of myself. And I'm not going to wait. I'm starting this first Sunday of a brand new month. I'm stepping into this 12th month, believing for the manifestation of the kingdom of God to happen in my life. And that's going to begin with this journey of generosity. Yes, man of God, you're praying with me. Yes, man of God, I'm believing God for new vision. I'm believing God for a new visitation. I'm believing God to become a new version of myself. If that's you, let me know I'm praying with you. Glory to God. Let me know I'm praying with you. We're praying. Father, we honor you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We thank you now, Father, that you have put us on a journey of generosity. We praise you that you have been so very gracious in your generosity towards us. We thank you for your loving kindness. It is better than life. We worship you and honor you that you have given us overflow. We praise you that floodgates have been opened over our lives. And for this, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now, Spirit of the living God, those whom you have called from the east, the west, the north, and the south to receive this word, I thank you now. Now may this rhema come alive in the hearts of your people, and may there be manifestations in this 12th month that are uncommon, unsolicited, and unstoppable. Spirit of the living God, let it not be by might nor by power. Let it all be of you and from you. We trust your power and not another. We seek your anointing and your anointing only. And so we bless you for the fresh oil that you pour now upon the minds and the hearts of your people. We thank you for the ministry of generosity, which abounds in the midst of this people. And we give you glory that you bring new vision, new visitations, and new versions of ourselves in this season. And we give you thanks that it's already done. We receive it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone who agrees said amen, amen, and amen. This was just a precept pop-up just to come on and give you this word that's been stirring in my spirit. I'm on my way to in-person worship here in the prayer area, California, USA. Blessing and praising the Lord that you are with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Apostle Jewelry is with us. Glory to God. We love you, sir. You're going to be hearing from us soon. We praise the Lord for the work and for the ministry. We saw the man of ministry for the children. Over 200 children are being fed right there on Marshall Road, and we've got to be a part of it. And so we're blessing and thanking the Lord for you, Apostle. We appreciate you. Glory to God. Good to see you. Senator Kimberly Alcorn, always supporting, always strengthening the call of God here in my life and on prayer everywhere. Blessing and thanking the Lord. Good to see you. Pastor Emmanuel coming on in. Glory to God. Hey there, me. We love you. Praising the Lord for you coming on in. Would you go ahead and share? Uh, would you go ahead and share before you leave? Just push that button that says share. All right. Um, I love you. This is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Teal. Uh, oh, yeah. Obey God in your giving. Come on. Obey God in your giving. I don't have to say that. I just said something about generosity. Obey God in your giving. If you're a member or a partner, you already know how to move through the portals and obey God in your giving. And may the Lord bless the tither, the giver, and the sower. This is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Teal. I'm signing off until I see you again later on this morning as I enter into 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in-person worship. You be blessed and I'm receiving the blessings of the Lord on your behalf. Thank the Lord for you.